the genius of it is just believing in yourself and, and then all of a sudden having something to show for it. From the 92nd Street Y in New York City, this is the Genius Podcast. In March 2015, 92Y will launch Seven Days of Genius, a week-long inquiry into the extraordinary people and concepts that have shaped our present and are shaping our future. Who or what is genius? And how is genius impacting our lives today? And how will it impact our lives tomorrow? Beginning March 1st, in person and online, 92Y in venues around the country will explore those questions and more through conversations with neuroscientists, economists, psychologists, journalists, and clergy. Today we're speaking with an award-winning photographer, a former biologist, who says he sees genius at work in the natural world he captures on film. To me, evolution is genius. It's something that is constantly refining itself through time, and that's the genius of that system, and that's why ecosystems work so beautifully. Paul Nicklin is a contributing photographer to National Geographic, where he's published nearly a dozen stories. He also has two books of photography, and he's the founder of an organization called Sea Legacy. I asked him to talk a little more about the connection between genius and nature. When people say, what is perfection, or what is genius to you, to you? and for me, that is always nature. To me, nature is perfect. Through millions of years, it finds a balance, a balance in the ecosystem. You have your top predators that you know, provide an overall structure for the environment, and everything else is kept in check. And when you see big sharks on a coral reef system, and you dive under there, and you see all the layers of that intricate e- ecosystem, when you have sea ice, you, know, you have the life that lives in the ice, the amphipods and the copepods and then the polar cod, and from there you get... Uh, seals feeding on the cod, you get narwhals, you know, the real unicorn of the world feeding on these, you get beluga whales, and then you get uh, bowhead whales feeding on on the amphipods, and then you get the polar bears feeding on the seals, and it's all connected around sea ice. So when I'm standing on a place that has healthy sea ice, I'm looking at fat polar bears, I'm looking at healthy seals, I'm looking at uh, you know, diving birds, diving down and feeding under the earth, I know that I'm looking at perfection. I know that I'm looking at something that has taken that long to evolve its way into perfection. And then as soon as you add humans to the mix, where we shoot all the wolves or we shoot all the polar bears or you kill all the sharks on a coral reef system, you see those systems collapse instantly. And it takes a long time for them to recover. And you realize when you see this how fragile it is, but how perfect it is. You're a former biologist. Do you consider your work kind of living at this intersection of science and photography? How has your background influenced the work that you do today? Absolutely. Great question. You know, I worked as a biologist for several years, you know, tagging polar bears, lynx, wolverine, wolves, and I was looking at these ecosystems, and we were trying to put those ecosystems into number. We were trying to show the importance of the health of sea ice to polar bears. We'd come back with these data sets and we wouldn't share them with anybody. And it was incre- and people wouldn't share their data with us. And as soon as you try and take the beauty and the romance and the power and the genius and the perfection of nature and put it into numbers and present that to people, they become very disconnected from it. But as soon as you can use the power of visual storytelling, since the beginning of time, we've been telling you know stories around the campfire, carving our stories on cave walls. And now our, we have photography, and it's more exciting than ever that we can reach you know, hundreds of millions of people with images that we shoot that show how important and how connected these ecosystems are. And people are visual communicators. So it has to be beautiful. To my, the photography that I do is always a combination of art, science, and, co- and um, conservation. You have to show them the beauty of nature and invite them in, and then they get curious. And then you hit them with the science. You know, the science is the ice is disappearing or polar bears are starving to death, and that's also the conservation. So these images for myself always have to do that, that cross-section. Do you have one image from your collection, since we are talking about genius? Do you have an image that kind of you look at and you think, wow, that's genius? Um, something that captures this image of nature that we've been discussing. Right. A lot of my good photos are actually flukes, you know, and, and it's, it's one that I was, I, I love it so much because it came as such a surprise, but I was photographing polar bears underwater and it was this big, big male swimming out in the ocean. It was a beautiful evening and he dove underneath this glassy calm waters. He dove under a piece of ice and his reflection was captured in and it became the cover of my book and it became, it's used on uh, Apple TV and if people think of, you know, um, that's sort of the image that's associated with me. And what I love about it, again, it is the art, science, and conservation. You know, it's, it's such a beautiful bear. And, like, what's the reflection? Was that Photoshop? No, wait a minute. Maybe that, you know, we don't do Photoshop. And so I like that surprise element of that image. And then, you know, and then you get into the conservation and the science. You know, bears are marine mammals. They can swim. And then the conservation is but without ice. 
they will disappear. And we are looking at perhaps the extinction of polar bears in the next hundred years. And that's the tragedy of it. And that's what we, that's what we try and do with our photography. You mentioned you don't use Photoshop, uh, but are there other innovations that have changed how you work, how you take pictures? Yeah, it's funny. We all resist change. Everybody here at National Geographic, I know in 2004 when everybody's talking about digital cameras and we were like, I'm never going to shoot digital. Well, by 2005, we had all shifted except for a couple of us into shooting digital cameras. And we're all like, isn't this amazing? You know, and, and I had editors here saying the day I have to edit digital pictures on a computer screen, I'm out of here, you know, and all, all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's fantastic. You know, it's it's just we all resist change. And I think that's that's the genius is that, you know, people have the foresight to push through with this stuff, even though they do face a lot of resistance. And all of a sudden, it's a tool that's bettering all of us, you know. So for all the guests we talk to as part of Seven Days of Genius, we will be asking them what they think of when they hear the word genius. So I couldn't let Paul Nicklin go without posing the question to him. Here's his response to what he thinks of when he hears the word genius. What do I think of when I think of genius? I think somebody who finds if they find a new way, you know, they, they don't, they don't, they're not conformist. They don't go mainstream. They believe in themselves. And whether that's, you know, somebody who's communicating visually, that's somebody who's trying to invent somebody, that's somebody who's found a way to, to speak or to show or to shoot images or to, um, someone who's out just forging ahead, leading the charge and, and everybody's picking at them and telling them that, you know, that they're, it's going to be a flop and they laugh at them, but yet they believe in themselves. And that's when I think being secure enough and having enough belief in yourself to forge ahead, do something new, try things, try anything that, you know, trying new ways to communicate. And, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you just did something genius. Paul Nicklin is an award-winning photographer for National Geographic. His website is paulnicklin.com, and look for his public appearances as part of National Geographic Live. To learn more about 92Y's Seven Days of Genius, make sure to visit 92Y.org backslash genius, and stay tuned for more to come.